Hello everybody, it is Sunshine. How are we doing today? It's a beautiful Thursday. We're coming up on the Leo full moon, guys. I want to talk a little bit about this because I'm going to tell you as a spirit warrior, I see a lot of misleading information on just basically the internet. I mean, when I say misleading, I mean not necessarily bad information, but incomplete information for a spiritual journey. Hi guys, everybody's talking about how we can achieve and manifest, which is, it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, hi Aston. I'm doing my face this morning, getting ready for an awesome day, doing a job that I absolutely love, which is intuitive life coaching and giving messages from heaven as a psychic medium. I love it. Hi, Aston. Hello, everybody. Hi, Renee. When I look at all these posts, guys, hi, Jamie. Hi, Troy. I see the same thing over and over. How to manifest, how to manifest, how to manifest. They're all telling us what they want us to do. <laughs> Jamie, I can't wait to talk to you too. But you know what? The thing they're missing out on is it's incomplete information and I'll tell you why. There's a lot of hippy dippy, airy fairy type stuff out there that's not realistic as to what's really going on in the real world. You know, in this dimension, um, and I want to talk about that. They keep talking about how to manifest everything, get in the flow of everything, be at peace with everything. But what if the things in your life aren't causing you peace? What if the things in your life that you're dealing with do not create positive feelings and the people that are in your life are not being their highest good? They're not on, they're not on board. They're not on the program with you guys. What happens when you're doing all of this work? to manifest and you're being super amazing, really patient and kind. But what about when the people that are in the boat with you are mutiny? They're just negative nullies and they're not willing to do that work with you. And, they, and not only do they not do the work, but they laugh when you try to do it. They're like discouraging to you. Or maybe your finances are a bit discouraging. And the idea that we can just, hey Mariah, sit around and just Imagine it and it's going to just pop into existence is really not really how it works. That's why a lot of people give up on the on the unlimited belief and doubt system and that's why they give up on the secret and the law of attraction and the limitless potential that we have. Cuz there's one thing they're not mentioning in all of this manifestation mumbo jumbo. You guys want to hear it? What it is? The thing they're not mentioning is you get attachments and you don't set boundaries and you don't clip things that do not serve you any longer. So when you're staying bogged down in stuff that no longer serves you and you're going through the motions simply because you've done those motions before and you're not being conscious and aware of what you're doing with your time, your money, even your words, and you keep giving to situations that are not serving you, you're not going to see a change in those things, guys. You're not going to see a change in the outcomes. So this is the full, it's going to be the Leo moon tomorrow night is a full moon, but if you go outside, oh, it's so pretty. Hi, Joreen. Hi, Kim. Hi, Mariah. I'm going to invite some people because this is not my normal time. And some people are working, but we're going to invite and see who's out there in the ether with us. All right, let's put that out there and see. Let's put some out there and see what we get. Hi, Lynn. If you guys are still giving your time and attention to situations and people that don't serve you, you're spending way more energy than you should be on the things you don't want. Honestly, attachments and abuses take away a lot of energy from empaths and sensitive spiritual people. This is why all the masters that ever mastered this stuff went away from other people, guys. 
Jesus went away from people. He already said I knew their hearts. I had no need for them. Hey, Alexa, turn down. I think she turned up. That doesn't seem like down. Hey, Alexa, turn down. You know, Buddha went into the forest and sat away from people and had little to say. All the monks, the monasteries, the nuns, the priests, they all follow the same pattern, which is to, to withdraw their energy from things that no longer serve them and people that no longer deserve their energy. That means people you could even be living in a house with. I don't mean your minor children, but I mean everybody but a minor child. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Susan. You said you missed me, Susan, so here I am. And let me tell you what else. You can give energy to things even when they're not in your house. How many times do you sit around and think about the shoulda, woulda, couldas and the wish I would and wish I coulda and how could they treat me like that and how could they say that to me? All those things that you're doing give that situation energy and creates an attachment to the ex, the ex-sister-in-law, the ex-mother-in-law, the ex-boss or the current boss. Hi, Christiana. Hey, Mac. So if you want to get into the mumbo jumbo of actually manifesting something, let me tell you the other part of that is you can't manifest things when all your energy is going out to negative circumstance. Troy, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're feeling better. You know, truly though, when you're giving out your energy, whether it be in person or just what you think about, you will not have the energy to manifest anything. Because you got garbage in and you're getting garbage out. You're thinking a garbage thought and you're expressing garbage. Hi, Mac. Putting my face on. So before you can start doing any real manifestation where things start to actually matter, guys, you got to start conserving your energy. And I want you to get control right here. Right here. Right here. It's the thoughts and energy you're giving away to everybody. How do you think... I'm able to do so many sessions with people and not let my own stuff get to me because I don't sit around and just dwell on it, guys. Hi, Miss Vicky. I don't just sit there and dwell on it and think about it because that's not how I'm going to manifest anything I do want. So there is power in the law of attraction. There's power in manifestation, right, guys? But nine times out of ten, you're losing all your power by spending so much emotional energy and thought energy and real estate in your head, giving to a circumstance that doesn't deserve your time or attention anymore. I'm going to do some red lips today. Leo's all about being bold and colorful and bright. All about those things. You have to choose what you spend your attention. And your time on, guys. So when you begin to think about things that make you low vibration, how could they? Why did they? I didn't deserve that. All that stuff that you're thinking about, why'd she choose him? Why'd she leave me? Why am I not good enough? All of those thoughts contribute to a low vibe energy, which just is like pulling the cork out of a bathtub. The minute you start thinking those things, that, that energy that you could be using, it just goes out of you, like just like pulling the cork, like I said. We don't want to do that. We want to start thinking about it and just try to have the, have the thoughts come and have the thoughts passed. Aw, thank you. Have the thoughts come and have the thoughts pass. So we can't control whether we think about the X or the O or the X mother-in-laws or in-laws, but the things we can't control is how much energy we give that thought, guys. So let go of the energy of the thought. Let go of the energy of the thought. Let the pattern go. Yeah, yeah, that was my X. Yep, that didn't work out. But I don't need to sit here and beat myself up over it. I can allow that thought to come in and just pass. 
So when you start to think about the ex or the daughter or the son or anybody that's done you dirty or done you wrong, allow that thought to come in. Try not to attach to it and just let it go. So, you know, you ought to say things to yourself, guys, that are going to help you, like her loss. Maybe they didn't know any better. Maybe that was the best they could do at the time. Maybe I'm a better person now. Maybe I made different decisions then than I would make now. So you always got to remember to not be giving away all your energy on the things that do not serve you, okay? Because it's important that we keep our energy to ourselves and use it for the most positive things, the things that we actually need. So as the Leo moon is upon us, Give me a second, let me grab my glasses. As the Leo moon is actually upon us now, it's important for us to conserve our energy for all the big things that we want to be doing this year, okay? Do not give your energy away to things that do not deserve it. Look, I got my queen throne chair. I redid this beautiful throne chair. It was like a 150-year-old chair. And I redid it just to go into my space. Leos are powerful beings. And the Leo moon is a very powerful time to shift your energy. The best way to shift your energy, guys, is exactly what I told you. Don't give energy to the things of strife, doubt, and worry. Things that are going to bring you down. People that have brought you down. This is not the time to be thinking about them. Hi, Sean. Hi, Ricky. It is not the time to be thinking about them, guys. I'm feeling so much better. Oh, my chair is so pretty. It's an actual, um, it's Italian. It's like, I think almost 200 years old and I redid this and this and yeah, I'm putting diamonds in it. It's absolutely lovely. So Taurus, we're going to talk about Leo, but Taurus is, is, this is the same message for everybody right now because we're in the Taurian moon. I'm sorry, the Leo moon. Leos are such powerful beings and they're so powerful in their creative power. However... The Leo's worst enemy is never other people. It is always itself. Because the Leo has so much pride and wants to do such a good job and is so motivated and driven to be the everything to everyone that it's really easy for Leo to get their feelings hurt, to feel rejected, and to get really sensitive right now. So all everybody's going to be feeling that same influence. You're going to want to try to do big, bold things, but if people don't react and if people don't do it, yeah, you like my curtains? If people don't react to that and people don't do those things and, and have that immediate appreciation and response, then what's going to happen is you're going to feel it. You're definitely going to feel it. So I want you to think about that. How can we make sure that we're not giving the energy away, shift it to what we do want, not what we don't want, but don't give energy to it. And the other thing is setting boundaries, guys. If you're with somebody and you've been in the same stuck situation for a long time and you know they're not going to change, then it's up to you to change. Consequences change people, okay? Consequences. And as a woman... Even as a powerful woman, you don't have threat of force over any man. I don't have a threat of force. I'm not going to hurt a man. The only way I can hurt a man is right here. Okay? Women don't have threat of force. So I'd have to actually motivate him to want to change. Which is where encouragement and consequences come in. You have to have a balance between encouraging him to change or her to change and having consequences to those things. So as we're in the Leo moon... Leo is so bold, generous, warm, big-hearted, loving, uh, protective, just amazing. That Leo energy is such an amazing thing. But remembering that because Leo is so bold, they make a very big target. And because they put themselves out there, their hearts are always so big and so easy to hurt. So in this time of this Leo moon, there's a lot of people that are going to be putting themselves out there with loved ones, especially around Valentine's Day, too. This very much ties into that. We're going to want to even send cards to people we may not know that well or 
do these big beautiful gestures for even exes or separated people or trying to change and shift friendships or even sending flowers to your parents or sisters everybody is going to be wanting to be a little bit bigger and, and ordering things for christmas i mean our christmas valentine's day and getting very bold with this but if for chance those things are not received well that leo energy is going to pull in and get very offended get feel rejected and get upset so before we did that before we do that let's remember that we want to bring the energy back that it's not their reaction that matters because decent people do decent things regardless of others reaction to it so decent people do decent loving things no matter what the reaction is so do the good things because you want to do good things not because of the reaction don't be controlled by the reaction okay i love that angela you bought a ring from your mom for your mom yeah, I was buying all kinds of stuff. I, I'm not going to mention it because they haven't gotten it yet. But yeah, I'm thinking big for Valentine's Day. And uh, this is a time to really begin to... The heart is just opening up for people. Love is the message I want to be bringing to you. Love, love, love. Love is so important. Love is everywhere. Love is the message. Love those, even those that don't love you back because what they do to you has no influence on what your energy is, okay? It's no, it's no matter. I can love somebody, even like my ex or my, I can love anybody, even if their actions toward me weren't loving. That doesn't mean that I want them back in my life or that the boundaries don't need to be set. But it means that I can freely give unconditional love without expecting something in return. And that makes me a more spiritual person. It, it makes me a, a, a better feeling, guided, full of the spirit person. And once you're in that flow of love, it's such a better place to be. So Troy says, I try to get along with everyone in my life. That's all I do is help and give. And in return, I get sadness, but I still give because that's what God would want me to do. So Troy, when you're saying that all you get is sadness, you have an expectation because without an expectation, you wouldn't be sad. There had to be an expectation that you held for their reactions to make you sad. And what I'm saying is just do it and don't expect and let go of the reaction and there is no sadness. You just accept what is and you're just seated in, okay, it is what it is. I don't have to have an emotional reaction to this. Even sadness is identifying that there was an expectation that wasn't met. So maybe we could try to let go of those expectations so that when we do something good, it's because we did something good. It's just for the sake of doing something good. Even if you like gave $20 to a person on the bus because they were down, Thank you, Amit. They were down on their luck and you just saw this woman and you saw her with this baby and maybe she doesn't even speak your language and you just give her that $20 and you never see her again. You don't expect anything. She can't say thank you. She can't repay you, but you do it because the gift is of the giver, right? So Leo is going to bring us really passionate, like, man, I just want to love and hug and kiss and I want to buy things for people. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Renee. I just want to be happier and like give and give and give and just, just be so on. But if you're going to do that, release the bullshit of expectations because they will ruin any good thing, every good deed. They say every the way to hell is paved with good deeds. That's because the stairs going up had nothing but our down had nothing but expectations. All right, Susan said, that would be me because I've got a big heart for everybody and I get my feelings hurt sometimes over it, but I still do it. Are you cancer, Miss Susan? Because let me tell you, if you're getting your feelings hurt over it, it's because you expect others to be as decent or loving as you are and people don't know what they actually don't know, guys. So whereas we're framing this, we're framing this in a, in a, uh, this idea that, well, we've done so much and a lot of people won't do it back, then we've already framed it where there's only one winner. There's only one way to win. And that's because we gave more and they gave less. 
So no matter what is going to happen in that, it's going to be that you will get your feelings hurt. So what if we were able to just accept that we love to give and that we're givers and that we're workers of love and that as a worker of love, it is our job to love and maybe none of that love will be paid back to us, but in expanding their soul, we could actually make them pay the love forward. So now the lady that you helped at the bus stop, right? The lady at the bus stop, now she sees another young mother struggling a few years later and she's the one with the pocket of money. This other poor woman can't get the snack machine to work or her child is pulling at her dress and she has no, no uh, change. You can see she's very frustrated at this point. How can then the love you put into her is now paid forward? And that's where it's all about, guys. Your children are never, let me just break the ice. Your children will never give you back the love you put into them, ever. But you shouldn't do it for that reason. You should do it because you're hoping that the grandchildren get it and the great grands. So it's all about paying it forward because we really don't need love back from anyone else because all the love we really need is inside of us and we're directly connected to source, okay, to God. We don't really need it from other humans. We just really need what God gives us and what we already feel about in ourselves. Because somebody could tell you you're so beautiful, love you so much, and you don't even understand it because you have no self-love. Okay? So loving yourself and feeling good about yourself is really so important, okay? Hi, Sunny. Hi, Tina. Yes, humbleness, Angela. Okay, Miss Susan, you're a Leo. Well, that, that would explain the Leo moon and the willingness to give and generosity. Are you close to cancer or are you like in the last part of July, Miss, Miss uh, Susan? Cancers, yes, yes, Jamie, yes, Christina. Hello, my Nordic brother, Todd. Awesome, yes. Yes, Tina, yes, Wanda. See, you know, and it's okay to give love and expect it in return. That's totally normal in the context of a relationship. But what I'm saying is that that thought is really programmed into us to such a point, guys, that when we don't get it, not only are we, are we not loving, but we're actually less loving than we started out to be. And that is not the goal. So uh, let's say I take jam and I do something really nice for jam on here and I expect something in return and I don't get it. Not only am I not being a loving, but I'm being even less loving than before I offered my love offering. So think about giving. If you cannot give it, without expecting nothing in return, then don't give anything. Because it is better for you to withhold your energy and be strong and centered than to give and then not receive and then feel less than. Got it? Got it. The emotions of the cancer, yes, yes. Yes, Miss Sunny. So I'm glad you guys noticed I wasn't around. I had to do a bunch of counseling sessions and my son got on a plane and went back to Alabama. And I am now planning the cross country journey again. <laughs> uh, you don't need to give up, Jam. That's not what we do. We don't give up because things are hard. We just re regather ourselves. So when things feel really difficult and hard and you're experiencing a lot of anxiety and depression, that's a sign that, that you're overwhelmed and you need to go back into yourself and ask yourself, what is your real truth? Because really everything's about the real truth, guys. Yes, yes, Lisa. Yes, Todd. Exactly. Fruits of the Spirit. Love, share, caring, empathy, kindness, compassion. Yes. Faith, peace, joy, self-control. Big parts of it. Self-control. The best part of self-control is letting go of expectations, guys. I can do a series on that every single day and never be off track. Never, ever, ever be off track. But as the Leo moon prompts you to be a more loving person, accept that calling. 
give to those, do for others you wouldn't normally do, feel compelled to be loving and to give more this Valentine's Day, but be compelled to accept a lot less so that everything you get is gratitude. Yes. I love that. Hey, Alexa, turn up. I love it. Absolutely so different on everything. You know, there's a concept that we either give up or we give in. That's really not, that's really not true. That's actually a matrix, a matrix concept that really doesn't have any permanence. Yes, giving with the intention of receiving is a con because you're not actually giving. You're expecting. Like, it's, it's not giving, it's an expect, it's expecting. <laughs> You know, well, look what I did for you. And then you start listing all of that. And, and you know what? I just had this uh, conversation yesterday. I said, I had done this stuff for a friend. And then when it came back around, nothing got done for me. Same situation, guys. Same situation we're talking about here. Yeah, good, Susan. But the other friend of mine says, you know what? Look at all the stuff you've done for them. Why didn't you tell them all the stuff you've done for them when they wanted to talk about what they've done for you? My response was, because when you are a decent human talking to another decent human, you don't have to list all the things you've done, guys. That's ridiculous. Because that's an unconscious soul that you're talking to, so no matter what conscious thing you say, they're not gonna get it, because they're not there yet. Yes, Jam, you're just overwhelmed with your emotions. Don't, you don't like, we don't give up. That's a matrix concept because every day, really, when you think about it, you should give up on a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff will drain your energy and is not worth your time and effort. Not at all. Giving up is a matrix concept. We, we do need to give up on a lot of things that we hold on to and we need to work harder at a lot of things we don't give our time and energy to. So, it's not really about giving up. It's about re it's about reshifting the energy to another part that we need to be working on. I'm glad I'm here with you guys. I feel really good this morning and I'm enjoying it. Good, Stephanie. But you know, if you get in an argument with somebody and you say, hey, this happened and they say, well, what about this? I did this, this, and this. There's a conditioned response to begin to defend yourself and disagree and uh, list what you've done and, and, you know, defend your honor or capitalize on good works. But I can tell you it's, it's, uh, it's a worthless drain and there's no sense in it because that's not really the truth. The truth is if you say nothing, your deeds speak for you, not your words. And when you are with another decent human you don't have to list your accolades for acknowledgement they should already be there but if they're not don't waste your time walk away it is a nice time to be online i didn't know if anybody would be catching up during the day no i don't believe so sunny i don't think so i love you too Okay, Juan says, but are one-sided relationships one-sided relationships are not fair? Would that be considered toxic? I'm gonna answer that in two two formats. One, all relationships to a degree are one-sided. Every parental relationship is one-sided. I'm gonna give me some more light. Give me just a second, guys. Let's put it this way, all relationships have some one-sided component to them. Wouldn't you agree, Juan? All mother-child relationships and father-child relationships are one-sided. And most big brother, little brother relationships have a one-sidedness to them. And boss and employer relationships are one-sided. So if we were to discredit all one-sided relationships, we'd be left with a whole lot of very even relationships, which only comprise, I would imagine, about 20% of all relationships in the world. 
So what we need to be asking ourselves are, are one-sided relationships toxic? No, not necessarily. Toxicity comes when you've tried to adjust the shift and they refuse to allow it and you feel stuck. So let's go back to the truth in that because this really is all about the truth, guys. Helping others relieves depression. It's a chemical reaction. Yes. So our, let's ask the question again in a different way, Juan. Some relationships are toxic and let's, if we're going to go ahead and preface that toxic relationships are because they're one-sided, let's take that from the opposite standpoint of why are they one-sided? That is a decision on the person that continues to give. So if you are married to someone that is selfish and self-centered and you give and give and give, having known that information, then you're toxic to your own self. You're as toxic to you as they are to you because you're allowing it by not setting a boundary. Do you understand? So we have to look at it from all perspectives and that's where the coaching comes in and helping you to reframe things from the outward and get to the truth of the matter. So yes, you may be with someone that's abusive and cruel and mean and doesn't think about you, but you chose that why did you choose that and why do you continue to choose that a toxic relationship means that you're as toxic to that person as they are to you because you're continuing to allow those situations circumstances that no longer serve you i love when you guys ask me questions i love it one i love when you guys allow me to open up the frame and allow some new information and get to the truth of the matter what is really going on and only when we get to the truth and knowledge of who we are and what we're doing can we actually change any of this stuff Susan I'm gonna tell you the truth you're not ready for a relationship right now because you're still hanging on to past relationships and you have patterns of behavior and they're very similar you teach people how to treat you, Miss Susan, and as long as you're willing to accept less, you're going to have less. All right, Brittany says, yes, I understand that. I'm currently dealing with that situation. I feel like I continue to deal with because of our son, and I'm expecting a daughter in June. Maybe in time I can change the circumstance. No. No. You really can't change the circumstance. All you can change is yourself. That is where you're at. This is the truth. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough that you can ask me anything and I'm going to be on your side and I'm going to help you because I love you. But I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is the dynamic is how it is because you acknowledged it and you allowed it. But you can change the dynamic simply by changing yourself. You don't have to leave the house leave the marriage leave the relationship to leave your to stop giving your energy away that's a conscious shift it requires no money nothing on the outside no sleight of hand just take the energy away don't expect what you're not getting don't ask for what they're not capable of don't continue to do for them thinking they'll change just bring the energy back to yourself and then learn to see them as they truly are and accept that and when you do you will free yourself from the addictive nature of trying to manipulate and change a person that does not want to change okay so Denise asks, what about when a person realizes and attempts to make it better well the thing is there that's not one person guys that's everybody there is a series of micro, let me put it this way. There's a series of micro realizations that happen thousands of times per second, even in your own brain that cause you to want to do better and be better. We are all that person. That isn't one person. We are all the person. We are all learning what we can do better. That's what we're doing here. And once you stop learning, there's no reason for you to be a spirit of flesh walker. You go back to the father, learn the lessons, accept the truth. 
see it for what it is. We are all that person trying to do better. If someone is trying to do better, you should hope that you have mercy and empathy on them. But that doesn't mean you have to give in to them. Consequences create change, okay? But the truth of the matter is, if someone's trying to do better, there is a mercy rule. But that doesn't mean you start sleeping with them again, move them back in, get joint accounts, give up your life and start living under them again, no. There's a truth in allowing them to assist them in the journey with just simply your energy without giving in and not consequences to actions. Yes, thank you, Erica. Dual, Erica, dual-sided codependency. Thank you, Susan. Jam asks, will I ever meet the right guy? Well, let me tell you, Jam, you want to hear the, the line or you want to hear the truth? You tell me. Do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to tell you what you want to hear? Because I can do both. But I want to be able to tell you the truth so you can recognize your pattern and I can help you, okay? Ha! <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Brittany, it's very hard. I will work on myself. It's only hard... What is hard is your acceptance of it. Just accept what is. If you're married to a dick, accept that you're married to a dick. Stop trying to make him Prince Charming. Your idea that he's Prince Charming and his inability to measure up is what's hard. If you're married to a socially uh, inept, spiritually, emotionally stunted 15-year-old in a man's body, just acknowledge it and then ask yourself, can I love him where he's at? Stop with the self-improvement committee. He doesn't want it and you're not helping yourself. When you learn to accept someone as they are, then you're in the truth and only in the truth can you actually change anything, my love. Yes, yes. Good job, Troy. Denise, are relationships constantly evolving and changing over time? No. Some of them are very stagnant and don't change at all. Some of them are very comfortable and you have two fixed signs. It's not going to change much. And sometimes that's okay. You don't need the boat rocking back and forth to create change. It can be slow, like the Titanic, it incremental changes very slowly. That creates stability in the shift rather than very chaotic, you know, rocking, okay? Hi, Christine. Wow, thank you, Denise. Need to move and figure out career changes, etc. Feeling overwhelmed recently. Well, you just put a lot of things in that boat. Let's, that's called the kitchen sink. We don't want to deal with things in the kitchen sink. So, if you guys ever walked into the kitchen first thing in the morning and there's a pile of dishes from the night before and then there's some from breakfast and there's cereal bowls and dried stuff, you're like, oh, don't do that to yourself, Erica. In this one sentence, you said, I need to move and figure out career changes, feeling overwhelmed. So there's three things there. Number one is breathe. Deep breath. Number two is we need to figure out a move and career change. Let's do one or the other because I'm pretty sure the universe isn't forcing you to do all of those at the same time. So why don't you sit down and write your truth? What really means the most to you? Being near your family, being in a career you love, being in a house you like, what is going to make you have heaven on earth right now to the best of your ability, what can you do? And that's where we start from is the truth. All the rest is the matrix and it is there to pressure you and change you, but you don't need to be controlled by it. All right. All right, Erica. So you asked me if you're going to find the perfect man or the right man, you're going to find the right man when you're the right woman. I'm very fair to my brothers and my sisters. If you're not the right woman, you're not going to find the right man. So don't expect a guy to come in with a six-digit income, 
over six feet tall without exes and sh and baggage and expect him to walk into your you know three account life with five ex-husbands and four children and two alimonies and expect that to match so when you want to find the right guy you've got to start being the right girl so let's be even about this guys we got to be a little bit fair in this like guys go on a date it's a job interview what do you drive where do you live how many kids you have how many baby mamas do you have if a man treated you that way took you on a date guys and was like so how many daddies you got in the picture i'm just saying how many babies you got to feed i mean i'm just how much do you make what's your credit score what do you drive like do you live with your parents let's reverse that just a little men and women are different but we have to be what we want to attract it's the law of affinity guys so let's go with that thank you mac that's okay, Sonny. That's what it was about, building confidence. They're going to create another job for you sometime around, I see, late spring. So this will be May, Sonny. So don't worry, love. Wanted to ask, how can you make things better when things have become so toxic without everyone thinking you're nagging and complaining them? Well, I could tell you that's a man. That's probably your partner. And what you're doing is the self-improvement committee. You think you're benefiting him by trying to improve him, helping him be his best man, his best self, live up to his potential. It's what women do when we love a guy. But all the man hears is what she thought was good enough isn't, what she thought she liked she doesn't, and the things I was good at are no longer suiting the bill. So eventually they get so discouraged, they don't want to even try, and all they want is to be accepted for where they're at. That's it. And it's called the surrendered wife technique and it works a lot better when you surrender your control of self-improvement on them and allow them to be like mine is a greasy pancake that likes to watch TV. That's, that's, I don't know why, but it's irrelevant to me why he likes to do that. I don't have to understand it. You know, I can't stomach 27 hours of ridiculousness and forged in fire, but that's okay. I don't have to. We don't have to become a symbiote where we're the same person. We are individuals seeking to cleave together and be more alike. And that can be just in a spiritual way. It doesn't have to be in the mental capacity that we're, you know, when I drum, he drums, right? When I move left, he moves left. We go right. We all go left. We all go right. No, let it go. Let it go, guys. If you feel, if someone is telling me you're nagging, complaining, then you probably are uh, shutting them into their defense mechanism and we need to work on that. Hi, Eli. <laughs> Hugs. Hi, mommy. Hi, baby. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to do a live. I'll be out in a minute, okay? Huh? Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, you choose the people the way that you, okay, you choose the, pe oh, I missed that, sorry. You're welcome, Miss Brittany. Yes. Yes, Jim, I just, I know I'm a little behind, guys. Give me a minute to catch up. You're welcome. Yeah, I got rid of the spammer. One of my favorite sayings is, accept me the way I am so I can learn and what I become. Hey, did you get your braces fixed? You did? Give me a hug. I'm so glad. They fixed it? Yeah. Feels better? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I love you. Love you. All right, bye. Let's see who else is going to come in. Accept me as I am so I can learn what I can become. I not only use this for others, but for myself. Remember that inside of every man is a little boy and all they really want is, is appreciation and acknowledgement. They want what, what these guys just got. They want mom to say, hey, I love you, or their wife to just say, you're doing good. And when they don't get that, they turn into this defensive, crabby, uh, projecting, you know, tit for tat, 
person that really isn't their highest and best self. And it's not up to you to change that, but you do have an effect on it, regardless of what you want to acknowledge. We all have an effect on each other in our energetic form. So we want to be bringing out the best, if possible. When you bring out the best in yourself, you tend to bring out the best in others as well. Okay, Kim, if you can't imagine being in a new relationship, then you can't manifest it. You start, the, you start the relationship in here first, in the mind and in the heart, guys. Maggie, yes, I would try nighttime meditations for your 11-year-old and also getting him to write down his feelings. Uh, 11, my son is 12 and my other son is 21 and my other one is, uh, is 6, the one you just saw, his birthday's tomorrow. So, a lot of times... If he's violent, I could tell you right now, he feels very out of control with his situation and that, that out of control feeling is the only thing he can, he can control is his, his temper. So that's why he's allowing that to escape him. So I would say more, definitely get him involved. My boys go to karate when they didn't do sports and if they're feeling that way, I definitely take them for a walk or we do some laps. Boys are physical, they need kinetic outlets. So if you're expecting a little boy to sit in a room and be quiet all day, and to be, uh, you know, still and quiet, that's, that's not how men are programmed. Their, their brains are not wired that way. That's, that's actually not a good idea to try to over-feminize them. Allow them to get kinetic energy. Understand that guys have to do physical things. They have to watch things that help stimulate their brain in a different way. They're not women. They're not going to ever be women. So I would say if he's acting out, it's probably something he doesn't feel he can express. Most men don't express their, uh, their feelings very well. So the only thing that they're allowed to express is aggression, assertiveness, and dominance. So one of those things are going to come out. So I would advise you to start teaching them how to write, draw, or do something physical to help get it out. Oh, thanks. These are my gray ones. I get these in a five pack so you guys see all the different colors. Oh, I got a lot of messages I missed. Sorry, but I love you guys. I'm just trying to get down so I'm not so far behind. Hind. The four principles. Yes, Jam, he does. Yes, Todd. Did you do Landmark by chance, Todd? Alright, tips for feeling freer in life. You're as free as you want to be. Remember that there really are no walls and there are no corners in life. It's limitless. So, we only get pigeonholed by what we believe we're pigeonholed. Like the prophet Bob Marley said, Emancipate yourself from inner slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. That's the truth of everything. You're as free as you want to be. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, five acres, absolutely. Everyone in the house has a hard time communicating since my son's death, Miss Mindy. It is so hard. My grandson has such, my grandson, his son has such a hard time with behavior. We are lost. What do we do? Well, I could tell you that as an orphan myself, I lost my mother. I was very violent. I acted out. I committed suicide. I tried to commit suicide twice. I still carry the scars from that. I had to be in a mental hospital for about a month to get control of myself. I, uh, hey, Alexa, turn up. I was very violent. I was arrested for armed robbery at 13. I was put in probation. I was in uh, foster care four times. I uh, was very violent. I had offenses. I went to four high schools. I went to two junior highs before I actually shifted and realized what I was doing. But uh, the behaviors, if not dealt with from the inside, will always manifest and produce negative results, guys. It's all about allowing them to speak their mind without the barriers. If he's not ready to meditate, have him do art. It doesn't matter how, you know, you ever draw in the dark picture? You ever been the kid that drew that thing and they're like, what are you drawing? This is violent. I can't believe you drew this. That is ridiculous. That is where you need to be drawing. Drawing the feelings, have him do the sad face, have him do the happy face, have him do the angry face, have him out there where he can show you, I don't want to talk. I'm not okay being in a crowd today. I am overstimulated and overwhelmed. 
I, I don't want to be doing this right now. Allow him some control over himself because the more you try to control him, the more he's going to act out because he's not in alignment with how he feels inside and what he's being expected to do on the outside. Guys, children are not just children. They're, 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 they are tiny humans. They're, they're divine beings and we have to treat them as such with respect. Their feelings are relevant. Even if they're in complete opposition to the parents, you may not feel that way. You may feel their memories are faulty, their ideas are faulty, but arguing with an emotion is a point. It's like arguing with the sky. It's going to change in five minutes. Why scream at the, why scream at the rain? Let it pass. Be the oak. Stay calm. The oak stays calm in the rain, the storm, the sun. It just stays calm. Okay? Let that be you. Allow yourself to be the oak and allow that child to be the storm for a moment. Don't judge the storm. The oak doesn't judge the storm. It lets it pass. If the leaves fall, the leaves fall. The leaves come back in spring. Be the oak, okay? I already banned this person. I don't know what they're doing. Hi, Miss Jerry. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, there we go. Children are divine beings, guys. So are you. So even is your partner who's living in the lowest vibratory pattern you can imagine. Everybody is the divine being and we came here to have different experiences. When you become the oak, you're then there through the seasons of your children and grandchildren's life. You can choose to be an oak even to a partner and you don't be the oak because they deserve it. You become the oak because you become the oak. You don't need to seek a meaning from them as to why you want to be a centered, focused person that is in the highest and best good. Okay? We become the oak because we become the oak, not because someone else deserves it. The rains will come. The storm will come. The cold will come. It will freeze the leaves off of us. Sometimes your partner will freeze your leaves off. They'll just fall off. They'll just your cry and your heart will be broken and you'll just feel like garbage and you just you're still an oak even without your leaves you're still an oak tree just remember that you are the oak let the leaves fall and then what happens when the leaves fall the tree grows a little more and a little few more branches come and a few more beautiful leaves come because no matter how cold it gets the spring always comes the leaves always return and the sun will always shine again even a child that's having the worst day, you know, they hit the teacher, they bit another kid, they, they threw food in your face, they told you they hate you. They're the storm. You don't have to be the storm with them. Be the oak, let them have the storm. Allow it to pass by. Just say, I love you enough for the both of us. I love you enough for the both of us. Jam, it's okay because even even trolls and negative people serve an amazing purpose in our life. Without darkness, there's no light. Without negativity, there's no positivity. Without resistance, there's no pushing force to move forward and progress. Everything serves a purpose, a season and a time. All right, guys, you know I love you. I'm hopefully going to be live again tonight. I am doing this amazing coaching work. I love doing readings for you. I am so ready for some readings. I am ready to bring some loved ones through. I'm planning yet another cross country trip and I'm gonna show you a little something I got before I gotta go. Look at this. That's me in the middle. But I guess that could be you too, couldn't it? This is me. And this is fear. And this is worry. See how they're sitting with me so well behaved? The goal is not to get rid of stress and worry, guys. The goal is not to get rid of them. They serve a purpose in keeping you safe, protected, healthy, and well. But the truth of it, and it's all about the truth, the truth is 
It's never about getting rid of your fear. It's about taming it. Being at peace with it and learning to allow it to make you a better person. And your worries are here to keep you... I'm sorry, here's fear and here's worry. And look, you can tame your worries just by allowing some truth in there. Just pet the worries. Keep them with you, but calm them down and make them your pets, guys. Tame them. This is the worry that I had about taking this cross-country trip and the fear of being my only singular provider on this trip and how nervous I was and fearful of not stepping out into my power and taking this amazing journey. So this is a gift I'm giving myself to remember that fear doesn't need to go away and worry is our friend, but it's all about taming them to a healthy boundary that allows us to still project our best and most positive future. All right, guys, if you like a reading, please book now at, I don't know if anybody has my link, www.setmore.sunshinefrost.com, and you guys can always inbox me. You know I love you. I am here for you if you just need someone to talk to, if you just want to have a listening board, if you need someone that's going to be a friend that's going to help you, even if you can't change your circumstances, you always have choice that you can change your mind. You can shift your energy and your perception always belongs to you. So you guys, until I see you again, remember love is all there is and be in your truth.